All right, you guys, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. I've been kind of amazed. Um, I know we did a video on this fig. It's called Negra, Negra the Age, the Ogde Age. It's from the um, town of Age in France, right? I think it's a French fig. And someone had commented that it's, uh, you know, it really should be called Noir the Age because it's French fig, but the truth of the matter is a Spanish grower found the fig, uh, named it Negra de Age because that's where he's from, is Spain. So his version of black is different from the French version of black. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is a little confusing that he did that, but that's the name for the fig is Negra de Age. And for me, I don't feel compelled to change the name um, even though that should be the proper name for the fruit is Noir. Now I do have a number of fruits over here that have been ripening and I've been just relatively impressed with this variety. You know, it's not the prettiest fruit. You don't expect a lot from it. I think they do easily attach from the tree. So if there is a lot of rain, contrary to I'm sorry, a lot of wind. Contrary to what the grower who found this fruit says about it, he says it doesn't detach easily and that it dries actually very well. I believe the drying part, I don't believe the detaching part. I've seen a number of these fruits that when you touch them, you see if they ripe, if they're, if they're ripe, excuse, excuse me, they end up actually falling off. Um, here's a couple fruits. Not the greatest, I think, ripeness. It's weird how the shape is because they can really form these odd shapes to them. Um, some of the fruits are shaped better than others. Like, see that one there? It's so strange. Um, it has like another section there growing in it. Whereas this one here seems relatively normal. There is some cracks in it, like right there. But the shape is okay. The bottom is quite flat, which is not great, but somehow it just, it just doesn't split that often compared to some of these other figs. Um, and that's what one of the things he says in, it, in his uh, writings about it. You can go on his website. It's uh, galgoni.net, I think. Um, never talked to the gentleman, don't know his name, uh, but he has a number of varieties that he has been documenting over the years on his website, which is really well done. Um, and he's even a lot of, some growers have even reached out to him in the United States and have uh, gotten some of his varieties from him. Like one of them is called uh, Blanca de Mela, which is a relatively popular one or should be more popular among people in, uh, in really warm, dry climates. That should be a really good fig for people in more fig conducive climates. Here's the inside of this, and uh, they're just not looking that great right now. We, we just had our first frost. The bottom looks a little bit weird. I wonder if it's fermented. Um, I think what I'm gonna do in this video though, as I'm doing with most figs now, is if they're a little bit underripe, which these are, I'm just gonna let them hang out in the fridge. Yeah, so these are, they're all underripe. I cut them in half. We're gonna put them on, the, on a plate in the fridge uh, with the pulp side up, skin side down, and they're gonna continue to ripen and do well. I'm not even gonna bother eating them. Now, I could let them ripen a little bit longer, yes, but I just wanted to reiterate in this video that it is a pretty darn good variety. I was a little bit down on it I keep going back and forth. Sometimes I'm high on it, sometimes I'm down on it. Uh, overall though, as of late, and as of really seeing the in-ground tree here in action, because we, I think in the other video, we only really showed you guys most of the, the potted tree here that I have. And that potted tree didn't perform very well. And I wasn't too high on the variety, but really after seeing the entire crop continue to ripen and, and kind of do its thing, I've been more and more and more impressed with it. So, you know, I kind of wanted to make that point 
in this video and you know really stress on that. I do have some Smith figs over here that we've been picking. Anything at this point of the season that's that's relatively good to eat is a really good thing, is a huge bonus. It can be hard to come by, and typically it is because it's it's so cold. But believe it or not, because it is so cold, the fruit flies have stopped existing. They're they're like hibernating. Uh, when temperatures are around 40 degrees consistently, they're looking for like a home. They're looking for a home. They're looking for a place to, you know, kind of just hang out and chill and not, not be around because it's just too cold. So you're able to get some good quality fruits. This is a good quality Smith that I have on a younger tree that this tree just put out a lot of fruit very late. Um... You could see even that honey at the eye on this one. I'm sure it's real good. Every single fig off of this tree. Unfortunately, this particular tree though is a little bit weird. So it hasn't really lived up to the, all the Smiths in their glory, you know? But it does put out a nice crop of fruits that typically are, have not been bothered by really anything. So let me try this at least. Because this should be good. Mm-hmm. Not as good as a Smith that I had in August that we were comparing to the Col de Dames, but still very, very good. We also have right over here a variety called Palmares. I have two of these figs, two of these trees. I'm probably going to sell... I'm probably going to sell either one or both of the trees. Um, this fig is just not really suited for this climate. The eye is a bit open. Um, they can split and the shape is just wrong. The way the figs hang is just wrong. Uh, however, someone will be very, very happy to have this tree, this particular variety. Um, I have noticed, oh man, this one's not as ripe as I thought. I have noticed from this variety very special figs. The, the flavor actually is very good on them. This is a Portuguese variety. The production, oh, we just lost half. The production's actually very good on this tree. I would say it's a mid-season to late-season variety. And uh, the inside should get much more dark red than this. And it's really, I think, due to a maturity issue that the inside's maybe a little bit lighter, but when you eat it and you taste the fruit, you don't get the uh, idea that it should be this light. It really does remind me of a fig that's a lot like a Paradiso. Um, and Paradiso is one of the best tasting figs, uh, in all honesty. This has got really good complexity to it, this fruit. So for many of the reasons I just mentioned, uh, it really does belong in someone's collection that lives in one of these dry and warm places. Here's one that's split open. You get an idea of the pulp here. It's a little bit nicer on the inside, um, although not obviously great looking because of the conditions that it, it's been growing in. But this, in my opinion, um, is a treasure for anybody in a drier place. I don't want it to go to waste. Again, it's a Portuguese variety. Most of the Portuguese varieties I don't think do well in humid places, to be perfectly honest with you. Name a single fig that is in my, uh, you know, in my top 20 that's a Portuguese variety. I don't, I don't know of any. I guess you could say uh, Seo Miguel Roxo, but that's just a hardy Chicago. Is that truly a, a Portuguese fig? Azores Dark, is that truly a, uh, is Hardy Chicago truly originally from Portugal? I just, I don't know. I have my doubts, personally. There isn't a whole lot left to choose from here, guys, um, among the trees. Pretty much everything fruited. We got to see everything we wanted. 
Um, you know, I wouldn't say everything I wanted, but most of what I wanted. I have two varieties back here, which are new to me as well. Let me see if the fruits are even ripe. I gotta check. These are young trees. This is, uh, what is this? Israeli black. My friend Bill had given me this. I've never seen a fig that grows this well and puts out as many figs as this tree. It's um, quite a sight. I think if, if the fruits taste good and they, they definitely look good, uh, this one just came right off. So I guess we'll have to, uh, we'll have to eat this, and try it. This one here is so strange to me. This is called uh, Medina. This is from my buddy, Ed in the Pittsburgh area. Dr. Ed, if anybody knows Ed. Um, he had this fruit, eh, doesn't look right. A lot of, a lot of uh, sap coming from the, uh, the fig here, that's a shame. But I still wanna look at it anyway. Such a weird fruit. I wonder if Ed's had any good success with it this year. Yeah, look at that, what a weird fruit. I really liked it because of the um, elongated shape. You guys see that? Yeah. It's strange. I don't know if this will ever be a tasty, tasty fig, but yeah, that kind of inedible right now. Try the Israeli black. This is hard as a rock. Well, would you look at that? You know what? This fig reminds me. It looks like LSU Scott Black. I would not be surprised if this was LSU Scott Black or um, what's the other one? The uh, Coldenom Grease VS. You know what I mean? Where does this fig even come from? I'll have to ask Bill. But I also think. Even Blava, Blava Floor, whoever I got my Blava Floor from, the figs also remind me of Coldenom, or um, LSU Scott's Black. I don't know what that is. Why is LSU Scott's Black just popping up all over the place? I don't think people really can recognize that fig very well. Because they can't recognize it very well, I think over the years it's just been mistaken for many other fruits. I don't know, we're going to find out. Do I have anything over here? I don't think so. Anything from this Corinth? Nope. Our Gayette had already put out a fruit. These trees over here didn't get hit by the frost last night. Oddly enough, do you have any uh, Moro de Caneva? That's right. Nope. And this cold really slows down the ripening process of these fruits. It becomes extremely difficult to evaluate anything this late in the season. Just because the metabolisms, they're not moving. They're so slow. And when they don't move like this, the fruits just don't get more ripe. Here's some split Moro de Caneva over there on a Pretty immature tree. We won't really count that. Nothing left on the Ronde Bordeaux. Let's see if there's any salt pain over here. Nope. We're really running out of figs here, guys, at the end of the season. We are running low. There is this medieval Yavor that got hit by a frost last night. And that should speed up the ripening. So as the frost comes, and as the frost hits these trees, if the frost does kiss the fruits, like it potentially has on this, this fruit down here, which I'm super excited for. I'm more excited for this fruit than probably any variety, even all year. I've been more excited for this fruit. This is Lampira 1. But as it hits that fruit down there at the bottom, you know, it does speed up that ripening. And it's not just for the figs, it's, it's for other fruits too. And they, when they get hit by a kiss of frost, 
it will speed things up a bit. Here's a LSU Tiger back here. Uh, I think it needs more time. So now that we've had a frost, there is a chance that the frost will kick some of these last few figs into gear, into ripening. But from this point on, if I don't get whatever I get in like the next week or so, I really won't get anything else for the most part. So it's really that frost that kind of just ends it, but also speeds up whatever is left out here. Um, and again, there just isn't a ton left out here. And you know, some of the fruits, just because there was a frost on the leaves, doesn't mean the frost hit the fruits. Let me see if these LSU tiger figs are ripe. Oh, these are gonna be good. We lost one. I'll have to get that in a second. Let's try this. I bet you this is really good. Where's my knife? Yeah, we don't need a knife for this. You guys have seen this variety. Nope. Nope, the inside needs more time. That's a shame. The exterior is really starting to shrivel, so, um, hmm. Not bad though. Where is this fallen fruit? This is a situation where I'm probably gonna step on it and not even realize it. Here it is. You gotta always get the man down, you know? Don't leave a man behind, guys. Oh, this looks way better. This does look a lot better. LSU Tiger, man, some of the figs sometimes and they dry up can be real good. Not bad. But, you know, we are in November. So what am I gonna do? Can't, I can't really uh, get much better than that typically. It is what it is. So we're wrapping it up here, guys. This may be the last review. Not even really a review. This is just kind of a talk on, you know, what the fruits are like at the end of the season and what frost can potentially do to the fruits. We looked at Neger de Agde. I wanted to cover that again. We looked at Palmares and uh, Smith. Um, so yeah, if there's anything you know left to review, that's I'm going to cover it the best I can. But I think that's kind of a wrap now on the uh, the fig tastings. So I thank you guys here for watching. We'll catch you all soon, okay? Um, hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Go down to the bottom. You'll see the uh, sign up for the newsletter. You can put in your email, and you'll be notified when I put out a new blog. I really do appreciate uh, all the support, guys. We'll see you for the next video. Take care.